Praise the Lord and good afternoon. Today is the fourth in the series of our inspirational messages. And our title for today's message is Greed. We are looking at all the things that we can expunge from our lives and so be the kind of people that please God. So greed is another vice that we ought to endeavor to take out of our lives. Brethren, greed has become or is a characteristic of the fallen man. We all want things and we want more things. So greed has been, it's also called avarice. Greed has also, is also referred to as avarice. And has been defined as the insatiable desire for things, for money and for things. Wanting things more and more, no matter how much we have, we still want more. It is an inordinate, inordinate craving to acquire and hoard wealth. An inordinate craving, it is a craving in the heart, a desire in the heart to have more money, to have more things, and the more that the greedy person has, the more he wants. The desires are insatiable. Insatiable means his yearnings cannot be satisfied or appeased. The more they have, the more they want. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10 says that whoever loves money never has enough money. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. So greed is a, a place or is a sin that plagues all of mankind. And if you want to live in order to please God, if you want to live with a godly character without regrets, you will realize that in our local parlance, we have something they call sikadu or money ritual. And uh, people who commit all manner of wickedness and atrocities to acquire this juju. Kill wives, kill children, shed blood because of this basic greed that has consumed a person's heart. So, greed is also wrongfully desiring other people's property or position or accomplishments. Somebody has become something. You don't know how he managed to become, become something or to acquire something. But you just want it for yourself by fear or foul means. The scriptures have a few things to say on greed. Proverbs 15 27 says that a greedy man brings trouble to his family, but he who hates bribes will live. A greedy man brings trouble to his family, but he who hates Rights will live. The second one is a greedy man stirs up dissension. But he does, but he who trusts in the Lord shall prosper. A greedy man stirs up dissension. But he who trusts in the Lord shall prosper. That's Proverbs 28 and verse 25. And the last scripture there is. By justice, a king gives his country stability. But one who is greedy for bribes tears it down. By justice, that's Proverbs 29 and verse 4. 
By justice, a king gives a country stability. By one who is greedy for bribes, tears it down. Proverbs 20, 9 and verse 4. So you see from these writings that Solomon saying something like, Greed is what underpins bribery and corruption. When people are greedy, then bribery and corruption thrives. Our country, Ghana, has been plagued with bribery and corruption. The police are taking it on the road. Everybody is paying a bribe or receiving a bribe. And all because of greed, the desire to acquire more money or more things. And Solomon is saying that if you are in that habit, you will bring shame and trouble and humiliation to your family. You will bring shame and humiliation to your family. Not too long ago in Ghana, there was an expose on judges put to bribes. Some took goods, some took sheep, some were caught taking money to turn justice upside down. Armed robbers were set free because judges took bribes. And apart from the judges themselves who were humiliated, think about their families, their children in schools who will be teased because the father took a good. So Solomon said that a greedy man will bring trouble to his family. That he who hates bribes will live. Proverbs 15 and 27. So greed is something that has eaten into the fabric of society. And we as Africans do not question where people get their money from. All that we love is that my uncle has got money. My father has got money. As to where they get it from, we don't, we don't seem to care too much. Now, the foolishness of greed. Jeremiah 17, 11 says that, like a partridge that hatches eggs that it did not lay. A man who gains riches by unjust means, when his life is half gone, those riches will desert him and in the end, you will prove to be a fool. If you get riches by unjust means, if you gain riches by unjust means, when your life is half gone, the riches will desert you and you will prove to be a fool. So what we are saying is that this very vast that is called greed, has driven people to acquire wealth unjustly and somehow they have not lived to enjoy the fruits of their evil deeds. The Bible gives us examples of, of, of people who have been greedy in the Bible and how they ended. Now, Jeremiah 6.13 says, For from the least of them to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for gain. And from the prophet even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. That's Jeremiah talking to, or talking about a state in which Israel had sunk at that time. From the prophet even to the priest, everybody deals falsely. We pray God that you will cleanse our heart from this vice of greed 
and cause us to be content with what we have. There was a very tragic story. There's a very tragic story in the Bible uh, in Joshua chapter 7 where a man's greed drove his whole family to calamity. When the Israelites were going to conquer Jericho, Joshua, God through Joshua declared that Jericho was going to be devoted to the Lord. When you say a country or a nation is devoted, it means that when they enter there, they should kill everybody. They shouldn't spare anybody. God, the whole country has become another God. And so Joshua and his armies were supposed to destroy the whole and burn everything that is combustible, everything that can be burned should be burned. Things that cannot be burned like silver gold should be collected and put into God's treasure. The whole town or city is devoted to God. That is what that means. So when the battle of Jericho was going on, a man called Achan went to one of the Jericho people's homes and found some treasure. And he stole it. Why is it supposed to be burned or collected into God's treasure? He stole it, took it back to his own tent and buried it. But what happened was that after that thing, Israel went to battle against a small country, small nation, and they were whipped. The Israeli army was beaten completely. Joshua said, how come? You are beating bigger nations. How come this small? Joshua cried before God. And God said, there is sin in your camp. There is sin in your camp. That is why you were beaten. So they started casting lots, and the Lord fell on Achan. So Joshua called it. Come and confess. The confession was, when I saw a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them, and I took them, and buried them in my do you know what happened to Achan? He himself, his wife, his children, his sheep, his goat, chicken, everything was still there. So Achan brought problems. Because of his greed, he brought problems to his own family. Then there was the greedy apostle. Of the twelve, Apostle that Jesus chose himself. One of them was called Judas Iscariot. Judas was a thief. He loved money. So even when Mary came, one time we were together and we know about the story of Mary pouring uh, that, that very alabaster on Jesus and, and, and crying and thing. John was angry. Sorry, Judas was angry. These things that have been sold and given the money given to the poor, not used on Jesus. And John was saying that it was not because John cared about the poor. Sorry, it was not because Judas cared about the poor. But because he was a thief, he was greedy. He wanted the money to be put in the money bag so that he could steal something. But this issue is buttressed some more when at the end of Jesus' ministry, it was Judas himself who went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. Matthew 26, 15. So, Judas did not allow the words of Jesus to cure him of his greed. And that greed caused him to betray Jesus. And after he saw what he had done, he went out. He threw the money back to the chief priest. They rejected it. And he went out and killed himself. 
So Judas lost his apostolic position and died before his time because of his greed. He realized belatedly that inordinate love of money does not satisfy in the long run. Brethren, the, the vice of greed is an all pervasive canker that plagues all men. It is revealed in habits like gambling, staking lotteries, betting, which is now an endemic uh, habit in all our young people. Soccer bet, bet with. It's all greed, wanting to get money quickly, buying and hoarding things, being miserly and stingy, and being preoccupied with making money through fear or foul means. If you live a life to please God, expunge greed. It is greed that causes the police to collect money and allow drivers without license or rickety vehicles to ply our roads. It is greed that causes the headmaster to collect money to place unqualified students in his school. It is also greed that causes the civil servant to demand payments before processing documents. Soldiers take money to shield galamseyers whose activities they have been sent to stop. The CEO takes bribes before promoting unqualified or undeserving people to positions. The government appointee demands hefty sums of money before awarding contracts. Even the so-called man of God demands money and other gifts from vulnerable members before praying for them or dispensing other spiritual favors. Brethren, greed is a cardinal sin because it engenders other evils, such as stinginess, injustice, treachery, fraud, lying, insensitivity to other people's needs. Let us endeavor to get rid of this and be content with what we have. Thank you and God bless you.